Well, hello, you are hiking with Jenny on the Appalachian Trail. Today's day 156, and I am at the west end of the Mahusik Notch where I stealth camped. And I am getting ready to do the Mahusik Notch. I've got everything secured, water bottles away. I've got just the one pole out for my camera and everything else is securely cinched and carabined if possible. I'm not going to take any chances going through here. Um, I have one other person um, who's going to go through with me and uh, we're going to get through this together. So I will take you along. All right, here we go. Old Spike Mountain, Bob Ma. Yeah. It immediately got cooler as soon as we stepped in here. And then like climbing back up, it's like you feel it get warmer. It's so weird. All right, let the bouldering start. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Don't know if you can tell from the video, but these rocks are all wet because it just rained all night last night. Hot Stuff has taken a different route than I took. I came down over here and then up there. He's going up there and down there. Woo! It looks scary. I'm not sure that's better. <laughs> Hey, you can see snow way down there in the crevice. We are in the thick of it. Whew. Lots of climbing and careful foot placements. Not 100% sure this is the way to go, but I'm going to try it. were made. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> okay, I gotta unwedge myself. <laughs> Actually, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> I just had to twist a little bit and then I could get through. <gasps> Fun. Not sure where hot stuff... Are you going up? I'm going up. Okay. Hot stuff went up around it. I guess maybe that cave was optional because you can go up over it like hot stuff is doing. I totally just went the wrong way. I think they want us to go through a cave because there's just like a steep drop off. So we gotta backtrack. Fun. Appreciating the arrows through this section. Oh. Hot stuff has very graciously <laughs> taken my pack for me. Oh. And he somehow managed to go 
over that. And you can see <laughs> that there's a mark. Oh, so oh. Have... Did I go the wrong way? You may have. <laughs> oh, no. Rocks. Oh, my gosh. Could it be the end? Mm. Ooh. I think so. Uh, we thought we were done, but... I, I did. Uh, nope. Nope, there's more. <laughs> okay, we got another cave situation. Looks like a tight fit. Hot Stuff's gonna try and make his way around it. Okay. That looks really tight. <laughs> Hot Stuff says he thinks he's at the end of it. I said that's what you said the last two times. <laughs> oh, it does look like the end, though. Nope. That wasn't the end. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> uh, but we only have point one left. Well, we are finally out of the Mahusik Notch. That took two hours and five minutes to go through, which is about what I kind of guesstimated. I thought it would take about two hours. So, pretty good. Like, immediately after you leave the Mahusik Notch, you are climbing up a very steep ascent called the Mahusik Arm. So I had to make sure water was filled up, get out my other trekking pole, so that I would be ready for this climb. I think it's 1600 feet of ascent over, I don't know, a little over a mile maybe? I'm not sure. It's a big climb. I have seven miles left on the day to get to Grafton Notch and I'm not sure yet what time Brian is coming. He has some things uh, he's taking care of so he doesn't know when he's going to be finished with that but after that it is a three hour drive for him so these next seven miles are still going to be pretty slow. One thing I will say about the Mahusik Notch, I thought that all of the caves, you, I thought that you had to climb through at least two of them, but actually you could get around all three of them and I wasn't expecting that because people like kind of fearmonger and say like don't do it by yourself. So I was like, oh no, like, I better find a partner. But I actually didn't really need help. There was one place where Hot Stuff kind of helped me up, but like, I could have gone a different way. I didn't have to go that way. And the part where he pulled my pack through, I, I guess you could have gone around that cave and I didn't know that. <laughs> so um, I think you can do it by yourself. And I don't think it would be that much harder, actually. I think it helped to have another person there just to share the experience, but not necessarily like needing help if you knew how to like kind of get around some of those obstacles. Made it to the top of the Mahusik Arm. Pretty clouded in up here. Whew. That climb sucked. I think it wouldn't have been as bad if I hadn't just come through the Mahusik Notch and my legs are already sore. But I've only gone two and a half miles today and I'm already just so beat. <laughs> I still have five and a half miles to go. So I'm going to take a break up here and have my lunch two and a half or two and a half miles into the day, which was, it took four a little over four hours to get here to go that two and a half miles. I hope the rest of today isn't that slow. 
I know it's not going to be that slow. We have mostly downhill to go. But I'm just going to sit here and rest for a little bit. <laughs> I wanted to point this out because I've never seen this before, but I think it's genius. These little, uh, these little pieces of wood just nailed in there so that if you slip, you have something to catch you and like grip onto you. That is really smart. I wish more like uh, trail maintainers thought of that because th that is much appreciated. These aren't like super slick, but uh, it kind of gives you some peace of mind if they were. Wow, there's something really spooky and beautiful <laughs> at the same time about this. Just the pond, like you can't even see the end of it. <laughs> it just disappears. And that's where the trail goes. <laughs> Nope. Jack couldn't have gotten on that door. Ugh. So I'm almost at the summit of Old Speck Mountain and the summit isn't actually on the trail. It's 0.3 off of it. I've already bagged it when I did the Grafton Loop um, and you're not going to be able to see anything anyway. So I am not going to do it this time. Um, I have three and a half miles left to get to Grafton Notch. I'm hoping to get a ride, but it sounds like Brian hasn't left yet, so I might see if I can get a shuttle. Okay, update. So I have a three and a half mile descent down to Grafton Notch. I was reading ahead in the comments, and it sounds like this descent is nice compared to what we've done already today. It's supposed to be long and steep, but nothing technical. I've actually hiked this before and I, I didn't remember it being that bad either. Brian hasn't left yet and it's like a three hour drive for him. So I'm going to probably be there in two hours. So I called for a shuttle so that I wouldn't have to wait around and I could just go straight to the B&B &B and get showered and stuff and he wouldn't have to wait for me to do all that. Um, and that way he can just go straight to the B&B &B and he doesn't have to worry about picking me up. So I think this will be a better option and much more time efficient. So I think it'll be worth like a few extra bucks to, <laughs> to get that done and uh, not him not have to worry about rushing to get here and me not having to wait to uh, get all my... Uh, town chores done. I can get started on it while I wait for him. So it'll be good all around. What I remember about this trail down is that, uh, in, in addition to being long and steep, um, there will be a waterfall, I think, that we'll be walking along at some point, which is really pretty. So I'll have to show you when we get there. Since we haven't really had a whole lot for views today, the, the least we can do is, is look at some pretty waterfalls, so <laughs> starting the waterfall descent. It's really pretty. Looks like a great swimming hole down there. No time to stop though! Have like less than half an hour before I get picked up. And there's still like mm, almost a mile to the notch. So gotta make some moves. Let's see the parking area. Woo! And it is 4.45 on the dock. 